This is a quick video on how to write correct 16th notes. The thing to remember is 16th notes, when they are written out correctly, show you clearly, visually, the beginning of every beat. So this is completely wrong. You could get the greatest musician in the world who's good at reading music, and they would not be able to read that because it's not written out correctly. So what we have to do is we have to identify what are all the places where four 16th notes have, have occurred and then if a note lasts beyond that group of four sixteenth notes, it needs to be tied over. And a way to do this is to simply assign a, either a counting syllable or a dot to each sixteenth note. I'm going to go ahead and do a counting syllable. The counting syllables we use for sixteenth notes are the number one, eanda, and then when beat two starts, two eanda, then three eanda, four eanda. So, this, let's get started right here. This is coming in on beat one. We're in 4-4 we're in four, four time, of course. And there are two sixteenth notes within this symbol. So I'm doing one E. Okay, that takes care of that symbol. The next symbol is, um, and by the way, whenever you're not attacking the note, that's you put that in parentheses. So we're attacking on one and we're holding that note through the E, the second sixteenth note of time. Then we are hitting this on the AND of one, and it's lasting for an additional two sixteenth notes, which would be A, uh, the last sixteenth note of beat one, and beat two. So this duration, which is worth, it's a dotted eighth note, it's worth three sixteenth notes, is beginning halfway through beat or yeah, partway through beat one, and because it's three sixteenth notes in duration, it's actually lasting into the beginning of beat two. Right, so that's that's a problem. That means we're going to need to do a we're gonna, we're going to need to divide things up. All right, let's keep let's keep going. So that's that's taken care of everything up to this point, up to this note. This note right here. Okay. Now it's time to deal with this note. Well, this note, remember, we've already had the first part of beat two is included in that note. So this note is actually beginning on the E of, or the second sixteenth note of beat two, and it lasts for two sixteenth notes. So it starts on E, and then it also includes and in it. Okay, that takes care of that note. Now we go to this note. This is also a two sixteenth worth of time note. The next syllable is a, uh, so it begins on a, uh, but it lasts for another sixteenth note, so it also includes the downbeat of three. Okay. So in that, this is going to be another issue because we are not able to see right now the beginning of beat three. We're not seeing where it starts. It's buried inside that note value. Okay, now we've arrived at the second sixteenth note of beat three, which is where this happens, and that is E. Then we get to our next one, which is AND. That's also just one sixteenth note. And then we get to this uh, uh, symbol, which is three sixteenth notes of time, and that's beginning on A, uh, the last sixteenth note of three. And then we have two more sixteenth notes, which will be four, E. Okay, and then we finally end up with an eighth note which begins on AND and then lasts through A. Uh. So this, by mapping it out like this, we can see where the problems are. The problems are whenever there is uh, a number that is not clearly shown, it's not corresponding to a new symbol in the music, that's a problem. So what we do now is we simply go to the very end of each beat and we draw a line and we see that's where we need to do a tie. Okay, So if we were to draw a line right here, we would see that the we have to turn this into an eighth note and then tie it over into a sixteenth note. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And it will sound the same as that previous rhythm, but now it's written correctly. It was not written correctly before. Okay, time to 
see the next place, the next place where we can't see a downbeat, and that's right here. So we've got E and a. Uh, actually, that I realized that that's right. No, it's uh, yeah. So we got to move this over a little bit because the spacing changed. So this is on E, right? And then it includes and, and then that starts on a. Uh, but unfortunately, it also includes three, the downbeat of three. So we're not able to see the downbeat of three. Remember, we're not changing the actual rhythm. The rhythm will still sound the same, but we're just making it so it's readable. So we're still going to not attack on three, but we have to be able to see a new symbol that indicates three. So that means we're going to have to turn this eighth note into two sixteenth notes so that we can see where three begins. So here we go. Okay, and then we're going to have to tie them so that the sound is the same, so that we're still hearing um, three. We're still seeing that three is part of this attack, this note here, but we're seeing where it begins, and that's what we need to be able to see. Um, when when music, when sixteenth notes are written properly, okay. So we're making progress here. Now we come along here. That that's fine. That's fine. Starting on the and is fine. Starting on ah is fine. But unfortunately, this is now lasting over into beat four again. That means we're going to need to create a tie. We need to start on. Uh, we need to finish off our beat here. Three e and ah. Uh, and then tie over to the remainder of that dotted eighth note, which will be just an eighth note. So let's put in that eighth note and tie them over. And now we have still the same sound, still hitting on the uh, lasting into 4E, but now with a new symbol that represents 4E. And now all we need is the and uh, which is perfectly fine the way it is. So we transformed the previous thing into what is the correct version by writing out symbols which represent each sixteenth note value. That's the way you do it. Now the only uh, that's the way it sounds. Now the other way to do it for those of you that find it easier is instead of using numbers at first just use dots and that's a little bit harder for me to do in this particular format but I'll try to explain it really quickly and just in case it's easier for you so you would say okay this is one an eighth note is worth two sixteenth notes so I give it two dots dot and another dot then I go to this so that that value has now been taken care of now I go to this one I say oh that's that's that is worth um, uh, let's act actually what we should do is go back to let me just copy this and I'm going to actually now move this down to here this is our correct answer and I'm now going to uh, undo this I'm going to put it back to the way it was which is to make it wrong again basically just to show you how this works I'm not going to do the whole thing but I'm going to turn this back into a dotted eighth note and so on. Okay, so say you were starting again, what you would do is you would apply um, you would apply a dot for each sixteenth note of value. So you would say, okay, that's that's two sixteenth notes, so it's going to get two dots. This is three sixteenth notes, so it's going to get three dots. This is two sixteenth notes, so two dots. This is etc, cetera, etc, cetera, right? Let's go, if I finish this one, this would have been two dots, right? It would have been originally, it was, uh, before we fixed it, it was um, <clears throat> an eighth note. Okay, and carry on from there. And then what you do, once you've assigned all your dots, is you just count to four, one, two, three, four. And wherever you find, wherever you are putting a line through a single duration that's where you have to tie that's giving you the clue as to where to tie so you can either use this dot method or you can use the uh, assigning of counting syllables method but that's how you decipher or how you figure out how to the proper way to write sixteenths and by learning how to the proper way to write them you'll also understand the proper way that they should be written and you will hopefully always write them correctly. Another, and here's what it boils down to. You must be able to see the beginning of each beat visually. You must be able to see the beginning of each beat 
with a new symbol. I can see I can see the beginning of beat two, even though it's not being attacked, it's not being sounded, but I can see it in the music where it is. I can see the beginning of beat three. I can see the beginning of beat four. That's what we're going for.